This is a follow-up video to my 960 sequencer advanced techniques number one video. If you have not yet watched that video, I suggest you do that before watching this one. There's a link above to the video. In video two, we're going to cover several additional advanced techniques for the 960 sequencer ecosystem. Before we begin, I want to highlight some features and limitations of the 960 sequencer. First is the clock. There's an internal VCO with frequency controls. This is the clock section. We have frequency range. We have frequency veneer or fine tune. We also have a control input, which is a volt per octave CV input. We have the oscillator on or start button, which will engage the clock. There's both a push button and a V trigger input. We also have an oscillator off button, which will disengage the clock. There's also a V trigger input for that. At each step, we have a stage or step in, which is a V trigger input to jump to that step. There's also a red set button, which will manually jump to that step. We also have a stage or step output and this is a V-trigger output that fires when the step is active. To the right, we have the shift section. We can either manually shift from one step to the next, or we can do that electronically with a V-trigger input, i.e. an external clock. By the way, going forward, I'll refer to a stage as simply a step. Step one, two, three. So those are the features of the 960 sequencer that we wanted to highlight. One limitation of the 960 is that a step output V trigger does not work when patched into the step input on the same 960 sequencer. It will work for other V trigger inputs. It will also work when patched to a different 960 sequencer or 962 sequential switch. This limitation is documented in the Behringer 960 Quick Start Guide, page 9. The fundamental problem is a timing problem with the circuitry that manages shifting from one step to the next. The first advanced technique is a workaround for this issue. You must introduce a very slight delay to the V-trigger. We can do this with the 961 interface. Here's how. First, we convert the step 6 V trigger output to an S trigger with the 961 interface module. The switch on time on the 961 should be set fully counterclockwise. Next, we convert the resulting S trigger back to a V trigger. Go to this section up here, S trigger in and V trigger out. Finally, we use the resulting V trigger to select a different step on the 960 sequencer by patching into the step in. We'll go to step two in. This allows us to jump from any step to any other step like this. So that's how to work around this limitation of the 960 sequencer step out to step in patching on the same 960 sequencer. I recently received a comment which asked if it was possible to create a rest with a 960 sequencer. In the strictest sense, there is no rest functionality. There are several features that can be used to implement a rest. Here are two examples. 
Number one, use the 960 row three to control the VCA so that some steps do not sound. This is essentially using row three as a velocity control. Number two, use the step gate out on one 960 sequencer to trigger the start of a second 960 sequencer. This could provide a phrase that lasts a shorter time than the main sequence. As a result, the rest would be at the end of the phrase. Let's look at the row three as velocity use case. First, let's listen to the sequence. Normally, the 911 envelope CV output of zero to five volts is routed directly to the main voice VCA. This provides a VCA output range from silence to unity gain at the main VCA output. Note that a 5 volt CV at the CV control input provides unity gain from the signal input to the signal output of the VCA. This will be important later. To implement velocity, we'll route the 911 envelope output through a second VCA. We'll call it the velocity VCA. Let's patch that change. First, we'll move the 911 envelope output from the main VCA control input to the signal input of the velocity VCA. This is our velocity VCA. Next, we'll patch the velocity VCA signal out to the control input of the main VCA where the 911 output was previously patched. We'll control the velocity VCA from the row three CV output. We'll need to set the row three output to X4. Here's why. We'll want to be able to completely silence the main VCA output with the row three step knob. We'll also want to get the main VCA output to at least unity. So we'll need a control voltage range from row three of at least zero to five volts. A setting of X4 will provide a CV range of zero to eight volts more than enough to meet our requirements. Initially, I've set all eight knobs on row three to about noon. This will provide about eight volts for unity gain. Now that we're patched up, let's listen to the sequence again. We'll switch back to the original patch to hear the original sound again. Not exact, but close enough. Now that we've repatched, let's play with the row three velocity levels to create a rest as well as some accents. While I've got the row three as velocity patch set up, I wanted to show you an example of what's called the gator effect. This effect is common in house music. It's basically a square wave or other sound source processed by a noise gate. The gate is controlled by some percussive sound source. The result is a rhythmic pattern that may sound like a telegraph. Let's listen. We'll use a VCA as our gate and row three as our control source. The row three knobs are set to either noon for on 
or fully counterclockwise for off. Let's hear it again with effects. Let's add a bass voice to the arrangement. I'll also change from a single pitch to a melodic sequence. So that's the gator effect example. The second example of creating a rest by triggering a second sequencer is too interesting to skip, but too involved to include in this video. I'll include that example in video 3 on this series on 960 sequencer advanced techniques. It will be available soon. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate the support for this video series. If you're interested in the next video, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I'll see you then.